Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. I hope you all are doing well. Unfortunately, we have to sit down today and talk about the news that Abdoulaye Decore has suffered a stress fracture to his foot and could set to be out for around six to seven weeks. This news was first rumoured on social media earlier this morning and as with any rumour like this, any injury rumour, any rumour that, you know, seems to be so unbelievable at the time, you sort of read it and think, well certainly before, you know, the last couple of months you'd read it and think, oh there's absolutely nothing in that whatsoever, you know, th 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 that's a load of nonsense, we'll forget about that one, that's just somebody on the wind up, but as I'm sure we'll all know as Evertonians, over the last three, four, five months, there's been a number of things that have happened that have started as rumours on social media that you sort of look at and think, no, they, they, you know, there's nothing in that. And they've actually come true. So when I when I seen this rumour regarding Abdelay Decore this morning, I just sort of feared the worst because it's always those types of rumours that, you know, seem so just out out the blue and uh, and so nonsense that, that actually, you know, end up being... The, uh, the truth, so there was a, a big sort of, you know, air of worry that flew over me this morning when I first read about it, and it wasn't too long before Paul Joyce come out and discussed it and said that Everton are feeling for how long Abdoulaye Decore will be out for with this injury, the club confirmed it, Fabrizio Romano himself actually said that it wasn't a full fracture on his foot, and it was just a, a small fracture, and he could set to be out for six to seven weeks, Abdoulaye Decore then replied to that tweet from Fabrizio Romano with a couple of emoji suggesting that that news is in fact the truth so i'll read the full statements from everton football club and the article from fabricio romano uh, or sorry the tweet from fabricio romano regarding the time frame and then we'll have a little bit of a talk about this and a little bit of a talk about just how unlucky everton football club are i mean seriously not only another injury to another key player but a player who you know is arguably the first name on the team sheet we done a video last week talking about the importance of Abdelai the core and now he's going to be out for a number of weeks you know a, a number of really really important weeks for everton as well it, it, it's just it, 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 it's our look it is just absolutely unbelievable absolutely unbelievable you couldn't write it honestly anyway the statement from the football club reads that Everton can confirm that Abdullah the Corre has suffered a stress response in a bone in his foot sustained during Sunday's match against West Ham United so there were a few rumours floating around the internet before the uh, tweet from Everton suggesting that it was done in training or that it wasn't done in the game on Sunday there was another few rumours floating about us to suggest that he could even be out until the end of the season they've obviously all been squashed as have the rumours that the injury was um, you know done in training the club have confirmed it was done in the game against West Ham on Sunday I don't really know when I can't remember Abdelai Decore struggling or seemingly being injured and if he was then I don't understand why he wasn't taken off even though you might say yeah Camu to bring on now who to replace but surely it would have been better to take him off as a precaution. I don't know. Uh, the club have also said that the French midfielder is being assessed by the club's medical team at USM Finch Farm and is undergoing further investigation to determine the full extent of the injury. Contrary to reports, Decore will not require an operation. So this was, uh, again, in response to a few reports that were floating around social media to suggest that he would need an operation on it. The club have confirmed that is not the case. And as I said, Fabrizio Romano tweeted just before Everton's statement saying, Abdoulaye Decore's injury have been told that it is a stress fracture and not a complete foot fracture. He is expected to be back in around six to seven weeks. And as I said, that was the uh, that was the tweet that Abdoulaye Decore himself actually responded to. Um, again, as I said, suggesting that that would that would be the right information. I don't know why he'd respond to a tweet that was spreading false information. So, yeah, uh, uh, look, I, I think you know, whilst <clears throat> okay. You know, originally this morning, we might have been looking at a rumour that suggested he was going to be out for for the entire season and, he, you know, he was going to need an operation and this, that and the other. To hear the news that, you know, Abdoulaye Decore's injury is only, you know, going to keep him out for six to seven weeks is much better, I suppose, than the news that we originally were being told or we originally, you know, were rumoured on social media. But it's still absolutely nonsense. And by absolutely nonsense, I don't mean that... It, as if anybody's responsible for it or as if it could have been avoided I mean it's absolutely nonsense that yet again Everton Football Club have had another key player injured within the first two months of the season we're two months into the season and we've already had our goalkeeper out injured 
for a few weeks. Our, our centre-half in Ben Goffrey out injured for a few weeks. We've had our right-back Seamus Coleman out injured for a month. Our striker Dominic Calvert-Lewin out for six weeks and still ongoing. Our striker Richarlison out for four weeks and still ongoing. And now we've got, as I said, arguably you know the, the most important player in this Rafa Benitez system, Abdoulaye Decore, out injured for, for six to seven weeks. If you're wondering... When that six or seven weeks will be up, six weeks to the day. Today is the 30th of November. That is a day before the Merseyside Derby at Goodison Park. That's on the Tuesday. The Merseyside Derby is on the Wednesday. And seven weeks is the 7th of December. So we will either be back, according to reports, the day before the Merseyside Derby or the week after the Merseyside Derby, which is, uh, again, it's just like adding a bit more petrol to the, to the fire that is already Everton Football Club, isn't it? I mean... I don't like sitting here and moaning and I, and, and I don't want to sit here and just moan and groan and, and be negative and, and this, that and the other. But I honestly, I, I couldn't sit here and have a conversation with another football fan that'll sit there and tell me that their club has worse injury luck than Everton. I just laugh in the face. Even them lot last season with their 458 centre-back partnerships, at, not at one point last season did they have worse luck than Everton have had with injuries over the years. Two months into the season, two months into a season that we haven't been able to spend any real money in the summer. 1.5 million spent in the summer on f- four or five players. Two of them have been absolutely outstanding so far. The one and a half million pound player in Damari Gray, who, who, who you know was worth much more than that. And Andros Townsend's been an absolute revelation. But not only have we not been able to spend any real money in the summer, but we've come into this season and we're a couple of months into it and we've already had five, six key injuries to key players. We're not talking about squad players, we're not talking about reserve players, we're talking about key players. As I said, we sat here a week ago and talked about Abdoulaye Decore and how he could be the most important player at Everton Football Club. He could be the first name on the team sheet and that's for many a reason. Not only because he's an absolutely fantastic footballer and he's had a great start to the season statistically in regards to goals and assists and goal contributions, but also because of his importance in this Rafa Benitez Everton side. I said it last week and I'll say it again. I, I'm unsure whether Everton will be able to continue in the way that we've been playing without Abdoulaye Decore. I think Rafa Benitez will have to change things drastically. And by that, I mean I think there'll have to be a formation change. And I think there'll have to be a tactical change as well because we rely at the moment so much on Abdoulaye Decore's ability to be a box-to-box midfielder, his ability to create goals going forward, especially given we're without Dominic calvert and Richarlison, and also his ability to help out defensively and to partner Alan. Now, we don't have that. We saw it on Sunday against West Ham United that, you know, uh, again, Abdoulaye Decore didn't have his greatest of games. He struggled, you know, a, a little bit. He wasn't first to every ball. You know, again, obviously we know now why because he was obviously playing with an, uh, an injury for large parts of that game. Um, but we've we, we seen even in that game that when he struggles and when he's not on his game and when he's not at his very best, Everton struggled. Declan Rice had free reign on, on Sunday and completely controlled the game. For West Ham United, controlled possession, controlled the outcome of the game, controlled you know how the game played out. And that was because Abdoulaye Decore, and Alan as well to be fair, but Abdoulaye Decore wasn't able to be at his best, clearly because he was playing with, with, a, with a stress fracture in his foot. I believe it's in his metatarsal. Um... And as I said, the system just didn't work. Without Abdoulaye Decore at 100%, the system just didn't work. And this is what I fear going into the next six, seven weeks. Not only are we missing Abdoulaye Decore's goals, which have been very important so far this season. Not only are we missing his assists, which have been very important, and his energy and his work rate and his desire and all of that sort of stuff. But we're now looking at a situation where we haven't got a natural replacement to come in and fill that void. We simply haven't. We can sit here all day and talk about Tom Davis or Andre Gomez or Jean Philippe Cabaon, but they're not at that 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 you know not not the level of Abdoulaye Decore as such. But they're not the same type of player. Tom Davis isn't going to come in and provide the mobility, the energy, and uh, you know the the, the um, I suppose the cover every blade of grass mentality that that uh, Abdoulaye Decore has. He simply isn't. And that's not me saying Tom's a bad player or Tom's not good enough or Tom won't do a good enough job, but he's not the same type of player as Abdoulaye Decore is. Andre Gomez is not the same type of player as, as Abdoulaye Decore is. Decent footballer, Alan. Decent footballer, really good footballer. Alan's had a great start to the season, but a midfield pairing of Alan and Tom Davis or Alan and Andre Gomez has got less mobility than my nan, and she's in her late 80s. 
and, and, and being deadly serious in saying that. That's not to say that technically they're not great footballers, but there's no mobility in that midfield. There's no, you know, physicality. There's no strength. There's no quickness. There's no sort of athleticism in that midfield. And in the Premier League, as a lot of teams have shown over the years, N'Golo Kante at Chelsea, perfect example of it. If, if Manchester United had an N'Golo Kante, they'd be challenging for the league. N'Golo Kante at Chelsea, Fernandinho's done it at City for years. We had Garner Gay do it brilliantly at Everton. We've now got the core doing it. It's all about that athleticism. It's all about that ability to run, 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 run and carry on running and keep going and never stop. And being able to cover every blade of the grass, being able to be that athlete that gets about the pitch, wins the ball, picks the ball up, intercepts the ball. In a Premier League, your midfield simply has to be mobile. And I fear that without Abdoulaye Dekore, we're not only losing all of the qualities that Abdoulaye Dekore brings as a footballer, but there's nobody that can step into that position and be as mobile as Abdoulaye Dekore is. And I, and I don't think that's a question. Yes, you can argue jean Philippe Abamon, but we haven't seen jean Philippe Abamon anywhere near enough to be able to make that assumption. jean Philippe Abamon's coming in off the back of another injury after being fit towards the back of last season um, and in pre-season. Is he going to be able to go out there and play 90 minutes at the level Abdoulaye the Corey does? I don't think he will. Tyler Onyango is another name who, who I think personally would be my choice. Now, granted, he's only just come back from a big injury himself. He played in Everton's under-23s last night in the win against Leeds. <clears throat> I believe by all accounts, he played really, really well as well. And Tyler Onyango, for me, is a player that, had he not have picked up that injury towards the back end of last season, he would have been in Everton's first team, no doubt, so far. No doubt he'd have played games in the Premier League. And he, in fact, I'd go as far as to say he'd be the natural replacement for Abdoulaye Dekore. And I would be... I wouldn't be. It wouldn't be ideal, because I think Abdoulaye Dekore is a much more experienced player in the Premier League. Of course he is. But <clears throat> he would definitely bring that mobility that Abdoulaye Dekore has, he definitely being that physicality, that sense, that athleticism, so it wouldn't be as drastic of a, of a tactical system change for Rafa Benitez if it was Tyler Onyango to step in. Now, I know you might say, well, he's just returned from injury camp, so brilliant, perfect timing, but <clears throat> this is a lad who still is very inexperienced in the Premier League, still needs to find his feet, still got a lot to learn, still a young, young lad, adding all of that on top of the fact that he's just come back from a major, major injury that he's got to get himself back fit, he's got to get himself match fit, and I'm sure the club's plan for him is to do that in the under-23s and then be integrated into the first team, not come back, not, not you know, be, you know pick up an injury as an under-23 player and then come back as a first-team player. I don't think that'll be the plan for him. But other than Tyler and Yango, I look at the rest of those Everton midfielders, and I'm not again, I'm not necessarily saying they're bad players, I'm not necessarily saying that in a different system they wouldn't do a decent job, in a different formation they wouldn't do a decent job, but in this current system, in this current formation, in the way Everton play, and the way Rafa Benitez sets Everton up to play, I don't think there's anybody that can come in, and not even just do the Abdelay the Corey job to a decent standard, I think we will see drastic, drastic um, difficulties if you know if Rafa Benitez starts to just shoehorn another midfielder in to do the core ace duties I think the only sort of option for, for Benitez now is to change the system <coughs> is to change the, the tactics is to change the style is to change the way Everton play and that might mean you may say you, you may see some formation changes, you may see some tactical changes. Maybe you'll see Tyler and Young go on the bench over the next coming weeks, and maybe the more and more he gets fit, the more and more opportunities he gets, and that'll be absolutely brilliant. But is he likely to start against Watford at the weekend? I don't think he is. And Everton have obviously got to have a, a contingency plan. You know, uh, you know, um, Rafa Benitez has got to be able to change it. <clears throat> if you see five at the back on Saturday, don't be surprised. If you see you know, uh, an extra midfielder in there. Some people are seeing on Twitter today talking about Ben Goffrey moving into midfield, Mason Hoggett moving into the midfield. It's a possibility. Of course it is, but it's all down to the manager and what the manager believes is the best is the best move for the team and, and who the manager believes is the best at, at doing that. Is Mason Hallgate or Ben Godfrey a uh, like-for-like replacement to Abdoulaye Decore? Well, yes, they're big, they're physical, they're athletes. Ben Godfrey, a lot of pace but doesn't mean that he's going to be able to do that job that Abdoulaye Decore does. Certainly won't be able to do it in terms of the attacking sense, as good as Abdoulaye Decore can, um, because otherwise he wouldn't be a centre-half. It's as simple as that. So, he will be an, an absolutely monumental miss. And, and as I said, we can sit here all along and, and, and talk about the most important player in the seventh team. There's an argument there for Alan, for Enzo Tanzer, for Damari Gray you know, uh, Jordan Pickford, etc. But I think in this current <coughs> Rafa Benitez system, it's hard to disagree 
that that uh, Abdullah the Corey isn't the most important. Um, because he just does everything. He's a box to box midfielder. He covers every blade of grass. When he plays well, we play well. When he doesn't play well, we struggle. He, attacking wise, he's been excellent this season. Defensively, he's been brilliant. And as I said, I can't sit another football fan seriously in the face and have them tell me that their team has worse injury luck than Everton because they don't. It's a simple. Everton were the only team to have had every single first team player out injured last season. Every single first team player, the only team. We're now. Not even two months into a season, just over two months into a Premier League season. Bearing in mind there's been two international breaks during that period of time, so that's two weeks off. So not even two full months into a Premier League season. And we've had our number one goalkeeper, our captain and right back, one of our best two centre-halves, both of our strikers, who are arguably the two best players in the team, and our most important, or one of our two most important centre midfielders, again, arguably the best player in the team, all out injured within the space of you know what, a two months period, it, 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 it's just, it's nonsense, it's absolutely nonsense, the, the look of Everton Football Club is beyond the joke, <clears throat> absolutely beyond the joke, I wouldn't be surprised if we wake up tomorrow and we're reading an article in one of the newspapers that Finch Farm's been taken over by the Spice Girls and Everton aren't allowed to train there anymore, so they've got to play on Saturday, haven't trained in the local park for the last four days and all the balls have, uh, have been popped so we can't train, I really, I'd read it and go, do you know what? Yeah, sounds about right. That's how unlucky we are at the moment. And I know some people will say, it's not luck, Cam, you make your own luck. It's obviously something that they're doing. And if it was an injury sustained in training, I'd say, well, why is a footballer breaking a foot in an injury in training? But it wasn't, it was sustained in a game, as was Richarlison's against Burnley. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's probably wasn't helped by the fact that he continued playing. But again, I believe was was sustained in, in um, I think, even before pre-season. So, it's it's just it's massively unlucky and Abdullah the Kore is such an important player to the Everton team that I I wonder and I worry what Rafa Benitez will do now. He's got it. He's got a massive massive task on his hands because it's not just as easy and, and I promise you this. It's not just as easy as going right. Tom Davis can fill that space brilliantly because Tom Davis can't do the job that Abdullah the Kore can do. I'm not saying Tom Davis can't do a job. I'm not saying Tom Davis can't come into the Everton team and have a role and do that role to a good standard. But that role isn't Abdullah Dekore's role. He's not quick enough. He's not mobile enough. He's not good enough going forward. I don't think he's particularly good enough defensively. So things are going to have to change. Systems are going to have to change. And it'll be interesting to see what those changes are. Listen, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this one, please do leave a like. Really interested to hear your thoughts on this and, and how you feel about it. What would you change? What system would you implement now going forward? Would you change the formation? Would you change the tactics? Who would you bring in to the team to replace Abdullah Dekore? Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think that there is a ready-made natural replacement within that Everton side that can come in and just replace Abdullah Dekore. And that includes John Philip Bamman. I'm not this... You know, I, I'm not disincluding John Philip Abamon in this. I just don't think he's good enough already yet. Or certainly I haven't seen any evidence of that. Maybe he will be. And I know you can't really judge him because we haven't seen a lot of him because of inj his injuries and stuff. But if there's any time for John Philip Abamon to step up and make his name at this football club, it will be now. And we don't even know whether he's fit to do that because he hasn't played much football in recent weeks. So let us know in the comments section down below. As I said, if you've enjoyed this one, please do leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. If you are new, that does only take a second. And check out the game review to Everton's 1-0 defeat to West Ham United as well. Massive, massive thank you for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.